Counting speed, camera speed and action! Welcome to another Create Greg video. My name is Greg and in today's episode I'm excited to talk about exposure. It's one of the things I've been neglecting for a very long time. I've been judging exposure by my tiny monitor in DSLR and thought like, yeah, if it's underexposed, I can still push it in post-production and I would add noise reduction and all will be good. Then waiting five hours for rendering when this old noise reduction plugin kicked in and do the job. And then I thought like, yeah, maybe it's time to learn exposure. There must be some way to do it. And yeah, it's super easy once you know how to go about it. You've got certain tools within the camera and external monitors which help you to do it. So you can use waveform, you can use force colors, which they are superb, I'll show you how they work, like they, they change my world for the better. And then if you don't have these tools, which you can find them in this fancy external monitor, which I highly recommend to get one with this function, you can still use your camera and leverage something which is called Zebra. I believe most of people know you can use Zebra to evaluate places within your video which are overexposed, but actually you can set the range for the Zebra and based on that you can evaluate the proper exposure. The rule of thumb, if you want to get the right exposure, you have to know how to expose human skin. Once you get this one right, from then on is everything easy. So let's dive into that right now and Let's make it easy and let's make it usable for all of you. Let's dive into a bit of theory, just a little bit to understand something which is called Ansel Adams Zone. Is some guy who used to live back in the days and he figured out that it would be good to divide picture into 10 zones of brightness where zero will be our pure black when our signal crashes, crashing signal, I will explain what's that later on. And 10, it's pure white where our signal is clipped. Same story, we'll explain it later on. And in between that, you've got the scale out of 10 when the one is near black, then we've got the dark black and so forth. What you really need to know, we need to know four, five, six, and seven. And this is the range when you expose human skin, where the four is for dark color of human skin, and the seven will be like a white pale. If you know that and how we translate to signal, to area of the signal, which you can estimate by looking at the waveform, from then on, everything is super easy. Let's look at our way from first and understand what's going on there. Uh, to cut a long story short, from left to right, you've got our picture, representation of our picture, from bottom all the way up, you've got the level of exposure and it's expressed in the units called IRE and the zero is the minimum, 100, is the maximum so if you reach zero it would mean you will start crashing your blacks you go to the level of the signal which you cannot recover in post-production there will be no data the same if you reach 100 you will get to the level which you start clipping the signal the same story you will not be able to recover from that 100 IRE so you have to look at the way from and at your picture in the way all your signal will be within the range. So what does it mean the proper exposure? When we get back to the Ansel Adams zone system and we know already proper exposure for the skin will be between four and seven, depend on the color of the skin. Because my skin is more like a pale white, so it's supposed to be around seven. If we think that the scale is from zero to 10, so it's equivalent from zero, zero IRE, where 100 IRE will be 10 in Ansel Adams zone system. So based on that, if we knew my face supposed to be around seven, which means it's supposed to be around 70 IRE. So if we now look closely at the waveform and I start moving my head left and right, you see 
changes on the way from where my head is exactly and the level of exposure on my face is around 70 IRE which means I'm properly exposed. We can look around our picture and see whether we've got our signal crushed or clipped. Overall looks good and we can use that waveform to get that proper exposure. It's not very practical on the set. I mean, there are better tools. The waveform work like a charm when you use it in post-production. If we decided to take our exposure at the editing stage all the way down and crush the blacks, this is how our picture would look like. And the opposite is true. If we decided to go all the way up with our exposure to start clipping the signal at the top of our waveform, this is what's going to happen with the picture. Knowing that and how exposure works and how you can read the waveform, you can use it to nail your exposure at the editing stage. But on the movie set, there is a better tool within the monitor you can use, which is called False Colors. And we are going to talk about it right now. Okay, let's now talk about the best invention since sliced bread, False Colors. The one I'm using, I think, is based on Ari system. Ari is the company which produced super cool camera and lighting. If you look at the bottom of my monitor, you will see the scale from 0 to 100. And the scale go from 0 black to 100 white. And we've got the, all the shades of gray from darker to whiter, pure white. Then we've got the certain points marked with color. The purple one means we've got the pure black where the signal is crashing. Then we've got the blue, which is called black slope, is the place when our signal is going closer to being crushed. Then we've got the green color, which represents 18% gray, also known as a middle gray. I'll talk about at the end of my video and show you another way how to expose properly without anyone in the frame. Then we've got our pink color, which represents Caucasian color skin. I don't even know what's the right pronunciation, but basically it represents like average white color skin. And then we've got the yellow, which represents something which is called white shoulder is the place for the signal which is very close to being clipped and the red color mean our signal is clipped. So when you look at our monitor and you see all the shades of gray, it just show how each pixel, each part of the frame is exposed. So with the waveform, we saw just overall exposure. We can judge just only picture by overall exposure. With this one, we can actually judge every single pixel. So when you look at my face, you will see how it's properly lit, how exposure changes. And when you see this pink and the green color and the shades of gray on my face, it means I'm properly exposed. And the biggest advantage of it, you can look at it and know straight away without trying to interpret the waveform. Okay, if you do not have monitor, which can be pricey, I'm using small HD one, which costs about $500. There are the cheaper one and more expensive, of course. If you do wanna invest in that, or you do wanna have monitor on your camera to have like a smaller rig, you can use something which is called Zebra. Let's look at the Zebra first in my monitor. So if you pay attention to my face now, you will see like a Zebra pattern on it. It means my face is properly exposed. The way how I achieved that, I set the Zebra to cover in this pattern, this part of the picture, which is between 65 and 75 IRE, which is supposed to be the proper exposure for my skin tones. If I decided to close aperture in my lens to underexpose my picture, you see the zebra is gone. Let's have a look at our false colors. As you see now, once the aperture is closed, we are underexposed and more of our picture is covered in the blue and purple color, which means we are clipping our signal. If I decided to open my aperture now to get the proper exposure, now we are back on track. 
my face, my torso is properly exposed based on the color and the shades of gray. Let's look at the zebra one more time, but this time we look at the zebra, which you can find in pretty much all Sony DSLRs. I don't know whether you've got the same option with Canon or Panasonic. I assume you can do the same with zebra. But looking at the Sony, when you see my face, you see the zebra pattern in the monitor of my Sony A7C, which let us know that our face is exposed properly. We can actually set different ranges for zebra to check how exposure look on the different part of our picture. If I will try to change it, looking at our zebra option in the Sony menu, we've got a few of them already predefined from 70 to 100 plus and then we've got C1 and C2 where C1 I set for standard rate 71 plus minus 3 which will allow me to set the proper exposure to my skin and then we've got the C2 which we set our range for 40 plus minus 3 so we can set the proper exposure for our middle gray. <sighs> Speaking of middle gray, there are moments in time where it's not the best way to stick someone in front of your camera and try to nail the exposure based on their face or color skin. And in that moment, the best way to go about the exposure is to expose to middle gray. First of all, we need to have a middle gray reference point. To fix that, we can use something which is called color checker. This one is from X-Rate. It's a passport version of color reference. If you look at the top, we've got our white, then we've got our black, and what is in the middle, we've got our mid gray. When we look at our false color scale from Ari, this middle gray is covered in green color, which means it's exactly 40 IRE, which is middle gray. At the bottom, actually, you can find the color chart as well. On the other side, you will find reference card to do color balance. Very useful tools to judge exposure, to record the color and then to match to camera. And that will be all for today. If you believe this video was properly exposed with false colors, leave a thumbs up. If you like zebras, consider subscribing. If you didn't like it at all, I'm surprised you got to this point. And there is good news for you. Next week I will be exposing another video. So you might enjoy this one. So come back and then consider whether subscribing or not. Until next one.